five. First Thessalonians chapter number five. And when you find your place, go ahead and stand for the reading of God's word. First Thessalonians chapter five. And we will begin reading in verse number 16. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse number 16. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Our Father, help us to catch this wonderful gratitude attitude. Lord, we, um, we certainly have so much, as Brother Justin uh, prayed, we have so much to be thankful for. Lord, I'd have fainted a long time ago if I hadn't believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living and you are so good, that is the very essence of who you are. And so, Lord, we, um, we rejoice tonight that we can gather together, and we rejoice tonight that we can share this wonderful truth. Now, Lord, plant it in our hearts. Let it be seen in our lives. May we manifest this truth, Lord, everywhere we go, in every day that we live. And we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, you may be seated. Well, we're not going to hear Patch the Pirate again tonight. As much as I would love to hear it, I just love that song, and I feel like it's a, it's a good precursor. I, I told my wife, I said, you know, I, I, I felt like I, I, it would be a good way to get, just get us in the mood and the spirit, and I believe it did that. And, but I'm preaching on catching the gratitude attitude. I mentioned this morning the fact that we talk about getting Christ back in Christmas, but I think it's even more important to get thanks back in Thanksgiving. And making sure that we have this gratitude attitude. I understand the world doesn't have it. I totally understand that. I never will forget, oh boy, long, years and years ago, um, saw a clip somewhere, and um, uh, his, I think it was Merv Griffin. You all remember Merv Griffin back in the day? Or Mike Douglas, who was one of those. I remember my parents loved to watch those shows. And um, had an atheist on. And they were talking about some atheist doesn't believe in God, and the atheist was they were talking about something, and all of a sudden the atheist said, "Well, thank God." <laughs> so you know what? God, remember where it said there in Romans chapter one, where it said when they knew God, they worshipped Him not as God. The truth is, and if you if you look at that, everybody knows they're a God through their conscience and through creation. If you go to another country, another, or another uh, continent where they have not been um, um, taught in evolution and that there isn't a God, every tribe or every people that have not been influenced yet, you know what, they, they believe in gods or they believe in a God. And so the problem is, is that people in their heart, they know there's a God, they just want to try to tell themselves there isn't because they don't want to be accountable to God. But the point of the matter is, is that we need to make sure that we are nurturing thankfulness, that we are catching, as Patch the Pirate did, said it so well, that we are catching this gratitude attitude that I think is one of the most vital things in the Christian life. And so to get right in the message, because I'm hungry and that food smells wonderful. And I got to tell you, I'm sitting there thinking, boy, I could cut that out and I could cut that out. And... <laughs> Yeah, because I'm hungry, man, and I just know there's some good food back there. Brother Matt said he's got uh, smoked uh, trout and smoked salmon back there, and I, my wife made enchiladas, and so just give me the salmon and the enchiladas, I'd be a happy man. But we talked about here, let's get into the map. We talked about this morning, first of all, the first thing, three things that we can catch to help us to catch the gratitude attitude. The first thing I said this morning is that we need to make sure that we, gratitude is always being expressed. It has to be expressed all the time. And I think if you were to, you know it would be great if everybody did a study on thankfulness. I mean, get a concordance, look up thanks, thanked, thankfulness, thanksgiving, thanking, all those, and you, you would be absolutely amazed at how much it is in the Bible and how much it is connected to our, what we, God wants in our spiritual character. In everything, the Bible says, give thanks. But He wants thanks to be part of every, in, 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 in everything, in prayer, in supplication, with what? Thanksgiving. So He wants thanksgiving to be involved in everything that we do. 
we ought to be, thanksgiving ought to be endless in our life. It ought to be constant in our life. I don't think we should just get up in the morning and say, thank you, Lord. I think that throughout the day, we ought to be thanking God. That we ought to have it on our lips, that our tongue is ready, always ready to praise Him, always ready to thank Him. It ought to be somebody says something good and you say, well, thank the Lord or praise the Lord. Amen? That's just the way we ought to respond in our life. It ought to be constantly in our mouth and in our heart. So gratitude is always to be expressive. You're going to have the gratitude attitude. You've got to do it all the time. Amen? All the time. It is a continual thing. It needs to be a continual thing in the Christian life. Second thing is gratitude should be or needs to be in everything. That's what God said. In everything. Notice it says, in everything give Thanks. Now, we are told, and you have heard it before, it does not say for everything, but it does say in everything. Now, I think this can go both ways. I think we can thank God for everything, but we better make sure that we are thanking God in everything. Now, if God would have said that we can thank God for most things, I th- by the way, I think this is a hard thing to do. I believe that to say thank you, Lord, in everything is not as easy as we may make it sound. This is not a natural thing for us. It is not a natural thing for a human being to be thankful and to thank God for everything. Now, if God said do it for for, um, most things, we might be able to do that. If If He said to do it for good things, that's easy. We all could pretty much do that. But He doesn't say that. He says that we should thank God in everything. Which reminds me that God never commands us to thank Him because of our feelings. We should never say, well, I don't feel like thanking God. Well, I'm glad God didn't say to thank Him because you feel like doing it. You know why? Because our feelings are so up and down. And they change so easily. And you may not always feel like giving that. By the way, just like you don't always feel like you're saved. Amen? Amen? You may not feel like you're saved, but I am not saved because of my feelings. I am saved because of my faith. Because I put my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ on May 6, 1979. Amen? And so we are not to give thanks because we feel like giving thanks. We need to give thanks because that's what God wants us to do. And we need to do it in everything. It doesn't matter if things are going good. It doesn't matter if things are going bad. You have to have the gratitude attitude all the time. And in everything. You say, well, I mentioned this morning, you say that was easy for Paul. No, I don't believe it was easy for Paul at all. Paul lived a pretty rough life. A very, very difficult life. Go over to 2 Corinthians, not now, but go over to 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and read all the things that Paul had to go through. And the many times, many years that he was in prison and he died in prison. And yet we have a wonderful living illustration, wonderful illustration of this in Paul and Silas' life. You know the story. They were in the Philippian jail. They had been beaten with rods. They had been whipped and they had been scourged. And they are chained to the wall in that prison. And the Bible records for us to read it and to use as an example. It says Paul and Silas. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and prisoners heard them. Amen. So while they were in prison, they'd been beaten. They had been scourged. They had been whipped. But you know what? In that situation, in that circumstance, they went ahead and praised and thanked God. I don't know what they sang. I, I, I think they may be saying, Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free. Can't you just see them doing it? They're chained and they're singing, thank you, Lord. And it says all the other prisoners heard it. Amen? And that's why when, 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 the, when God opened up that prison, one of those centurions said to them, what must I do to be saved? I want what you got, man. And that's exactly why we need to be having that kind of a spirit in our life. It is a flag. It is a flag that tells people that we are saved. 
You ever sang that song? Uh, uh, There's a flag flown high in the castle of my heart. And that's what thanksgiving is, giving thanks. Oh, we need to do that. So what am I saying? I'm saying be grateful for the benefits in your life. Benefits in your life. Psalms 103, would you look at it with me? Psalms 103, verse 1, one of my favorite verses in the book of Psalms. Psalm, the whole psalm is great, but look at Psalms 103, verse 1. Psalms 103, verse number 1. This is a good Thanksgiving psalm to read to yourself or to your family. But look at Psalms 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul. So he's telling his soul, you need to start blessing the Lord. Amen? You ought to preach to yourself every once in a while. Look at yourself in the mirror and say, buddy, you look like you have the poochie lip disease. You look like you've been weaned on a dill pickle. Look at yourself sometimes and practice smiling. (laughs) Amen. Some of you need to practice a lot. And you look at that, your face, and you say, bless the Lord. Hey, soul, hey, you, will you please start blessing the Lord? Would you please start thanking the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and look at it. Forget not all his what? Benefits, blessings. Don't forget all the benefits. People brag, I got a job with all the benefits. And we say, boy, that's a great thing. Well, guess what? When you become a Christian, you get a Christian life with all the benefits. God gives us the benefits. And by the way, I am not talking one iota about money. I, listen, money has never made anybody happy. Nobody. There are people, listen, the more money you have, the more psychologists you need to see. And the more pills you need to take. And the more worries, you, I'm not kidding you now. I know people that are rich, and you know what? They, they live with anxiety and worries. Some of them are a nervous wreck. They're worried they're going to lose it. And quite frankly, they couldn't imagine living without money or not having a lot of money. But money doesn't make you happy. And the benefits of God has nothing to do with money. I like what somebody said. A Christian is someone that does not have to consult his bank book to see how wealthy he really is. Shake hands with a poor boy that owns everything what that song says and do you and that and, and and here comes the question do you take time every day to thank God for better I heard brother foot saying near the end of his lesson talking about spending time with God walking with God every single morning and I think a part of that time spending time with God is thanking God for the benefits in your life for the good things that God has given to you. And we have so many. I mean, we've got homes, we've got cars, we've got clothes to wear. Uh, we've got shoes on our feet. We've got heaters in our homes where none of us are going to be cold tonight. Cut water. Somebody say amen. Every time I get in that shower, I, I, remember, I remember what it was like to be on ship in the Navy and not have hot water. And I remember one time at the house over there at Agape, the, the power is water. Something I had to take a shower in cold water. And I felt like, man, I'm just, this is the end of the world. <laughs> and we do. But you know what? We don't think much of hot water, but we'll think a lot about it if we lose it. And we got a refrigerator to keep our food nice and cold. Amen. Oh, my goodness, we've got wash. Ladies, you've got washing machines and dryers and dishwashers, garbage disposals, irons, amen? The list goes on and on and on. God is good. And you've got to think about all the bad. Man, we've got guns and shotguns and 357s and 40 mag. <laughs> we got it all, amen? we got so much. Oh, we need to. And, 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 and food, we've got so much food, and most of us are on a diet. We're constantly trying not to eat too much food, but tonight, by the way, that's all off tonight. <laughs> Nobody is allowed to have a diet tonight, amen? And, and by the way, Thanksgiving too, diets are off. That, I think that's in the Bible somewhere. <laughs> eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow you may die, is what the Bible said. Doesn't it say that? Absolutely, it says that. Oh, listen, did you know that two-thirds of the world goes to bed hungry every night? Two-thirds. Two-thirds. Did you know that one-third of that two-third of the world is underfed, and one-third of that two-thirds, they're starving? 
People are actually starving right now. We throw more food away than what people have. I remember John Esposito said he took some Cambodians that it was a part of his ministry there, the church he had there. And he took them to a restaurant. First, first time they'd ever been to a restaurant. And they could not, they could not order one plate for themselves. They said, that this is way too much food. And there were three or four of them there. And they ordered one plate. They would not. They said, no. No, pastor. We'll just get one plate and we'll share it with each one of us. We, we have no idea. We really don't how good we have it. They say, they say that 30 people starve to death every minute. And guess what we complain about? Dirty dishes. Somebody, somebody... Wrote, uh, wrote a little poem. Thank God for dirty dishes. They have a tale to tell. While others may go hungry, we've eaten very well. With home health and happiness, I shouldn't want to fuss. By the stack of evidence, God's been very good to us. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Man on Thanksgiving, ladies, you get all the piles of dishes and everything. Instead of saying, oh, look at all these dishes, you ought to say, oh, look at all these dishes. Man, look at all the food we ate and all the leftovers we're going to have for days. Amen? Turkey tacos and turkey this and turkey that. Aren't you guys excited? I am. Turkey is wonderful. Man, I, 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 by the way, I do not understand how a Christian could sit down at any meal and not say a word of thanks. To their God. I don't understand how Christian can go to a restaurant and not bow their heads and say, Thank you, Lord, for what you're about to give us. Oh, we ought to have the attitude like a little girl. Her daddy was a radio broadcaster. She was invited over to their, her friend's house for a meal. And so she came and she sat, and the mother asked if the little girl, if, she, if they, they would be honored, if she would ask the blessing upon the meal and so she was so thrilled to do that and so she got all excited she got to thinking she cleared her throat and she bowed her head and she said this food friends is coming to you through the courtesy of almighty god <laughs> and she had it absolutely right amen it is it all comes through the almighty god everything is given to us from god so all i'm saying tonight is thank god for the benefits for the blessing, we should not be complaining. We should not. We have nothing to complain about and compared to how other people have it in this world. But with that, I also say, boy, thank God for your burdens too. Thank God for the burden. Now, this is the hard one. The Bible says we're commanded in everything to give thanks. It's not for everything. It's in everything. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that we thank God for our troubles. But it does say that we ought to be thankful in the midst of our troubles. It doesn't necessarily mean that we're to be thankful for the trials, but we are to be thankful in the midst of our trials. Is it okay to thank God for your trials? Absolutely. The more you are thankful for what you have, the better off you're going to be. It doesn't necessarily mean to be thankful for the burdens, but we are to be thankful in our burdens. It doesn't necessarily mean that we're to be thankful for our disappointments and our heartaches and, and all the things that come into life, but we are to be thankful in the midst of these disappointments and the heartache. The point is, God does not want our circumstances to determine our thankfulness. God wants to be thankful for everything. You say, Pastor, how in the world can I do that? I, I think there are three things you need, to be, you need to have in this mind up here. If you're going to be that, have that gratitude attitude in every circumstance, the first thing you need to know is that God loves you. What I preached last Sunday night, thank you, Brother Bill, for saying kind words on Wednesday night. And I believe with all my heart, last Sunday night, if you didn't hear it, is a life-changing message. You, you've got to believe God. If you can believe that God loves you, then anything and everything in your life, you know that it is for good. Then number two, you need to believe that God is in control of everything. We serve a sovereign God. I do not understand it. And I will not preach to you that I understand because I don't understand. But I do know that He is in control. The Most High ruleth in the kingdom of man. 
God had to take down one of the greatest, most powerful kings that ever lived on this earth. His name was Nebuchadnezzar. God had to turn him into an animal for seven years until finally when he came out of that thing, he said, the most high ruleth in the kingdom of man. He understood that there was somebody greater than he because he thought he was it. None of us are it. God is in control. You've got to believe God loves you. And you've got to believe that God is in control. And you've got to believe that God is smarter than you. And wiser than you. And more understanding than you. Do not lean to your own understanding. That's always dangerous. His ways are above our ways. His thoughts are above our thoughts. We, don't, we can never. Who wants a God that you can't understand? We can't. But he does say, be thankful in everything. In everything you're going through. When you're going through the good times, be thankful. When you're going through the bad times, be thankful. Oh, 2 Corinthians 4.15. Look at it. Look at 2 Corinthians 4.15. Look at this wonderful verse. 2 Corinthians 4.15. You ought to underline this verse, especially this first part. Look what he says, for all things are what? For your sakes. For your sake. That the what? The abundant what? Grace. Grace is power to do the will of God. Grace is God's strength. The abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. Let me tell you, when you learn to give thanks in everything... You, when you give thanks, you ignite the grace of God in your life, and you then will begin to give God glory in your life. I'm telling you, thanksgiving ought to be something that people see in your life continually, on your job. When, when most guys, I've worked secular job, most people in secular work today, they complain about everything. They, I got to work, or they want me here. They, they're changing my schedule. Complain, 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 murmur, murmur, murmur. And the sad thing is, Christians get into that. You ought not let anybody lead you into being a complainer, or a murmur, or a critic. Amen. You stand up above all that stuff. You say, you know what? I thank God that I have a job. You say something that's positive. You say something that lifts up the people. They may not be the best, but I can show you in the book of Colossians, when you have a boss that isn't good to you, you're still supposed to obey him. You're still supposed to honor him, like Daniel did. Oh, my goodness. We need to make sure we are giving thanks. And and, and the reason why we can give thanks in everything, because we know everything, listen, is for our sake. For our sake. God, everything is for us. It's all for us. We need to give thanks in every situation, regardless how bad it may seem, because God wants to use it in our life. One of my favorite quotes, I think I must use it at least once a year, if not more, is a quote from Matthew Henry. And I guarantee you're going to love it if you've not heard it before. One day, Matthew Henry of course, the commentator, preacher. He was jumped by some thieves and robbers, beaten up. Money was taken. All of his money was taken from him. And he wrote, and that night he got home and he wrote in his diary at the end of the night. Listen to these words. He said, I am so very thankful. First, because I was never robbed before. Second, because although they took my purse, they did not take my life. Third, Because although they took everything I had, it wasn't very much. And then fourth, listen to this one. Fourth, it was was I who was robbed and not I who robbed. Wow, I get goosebumps every time I read that. That's a spiritual man right there. That's a thank. And it makes me think, how often do I thank God when things aren't going good in my life? How often do I... Boy, when you get that extra check or something happens and you get something you weren't expecting, and boy, you're, thank God, boy, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I wonder if you do that when things go bad. You have that same kind of spirit, same kind of clap. Thank you, Lord. 
Can I tell you why oftentimes we don't do that? Because if you do it, then what you're saying is, listen to me care, if you do thank God in everything, and I'm talking especially about the bad things, it means you have to accept it. I, I think a lot of Christians don't want, that's why they don't want to thank God, because they don't want to accept it. And they don't want to accept that God actually has a purpose. Uh, they would rather complain about it. They would rather have something that they can gripe about. They, for some people, they wouldn't have a decent conversation if they have something to complain about. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I heard somebody say, you know, when you ask somebody, don't go ask somebody how they're doing because they just might tell you. And the truth is, some people can't have a conversation with, at some point in time, they're going to go to the negative. Everybody, amen? Somebody, everybody okay? But you know it's true. You know, people have conversation for a long time, and typically, the longer the conversation goes, at some point, you're going to start going in an area you don't need to be going. Oh, my. We, someone wrote this. Uh, we thank him for... The sun, do you thank him for the rain? We thank him for joy, do we thank him for pain? We thank him for gains, do we thank him for losses? We thank him for blessings, do we thank him for crosses? Oh, I want to catch the gratitude attitude, don't you? I want to catch it, I want to have it, I want to live it every day of my life. And if we're going to do it, you have to express gratitude all the time. Just make it something you do all the time. Praise the Lord, thank the Lord. And, and not because people are around you. You ought to be doing it when nobody's around you. You're driving on the road and you think of something. Boy, thank you, Lord, for that. You hear something. Thank you, Lord, for that. And then we need to be not only doing it all the time, but you express gratitude in everything. In everything. You hear some bad news. You say, Lord, I, I just want to keep a gratitude attitude in there. Then lastly, number three, gratitude is expected. You have to remember that gratitude is expected. You say, what do you mean, Pastor? Well, look at the verse again. For this is the what? Will of God. In Christ Jesus. Concerning you. You say, Who's it, who is it expected by? By God. God expects you. Uh, does God expect you to go to church? Somebody say amen. amen. Absolutely. Does God expect you to live a holy life? Absolutely. And does God expect you to thank Him because it is His will? Yes, He does. God expects you to do that. You know why, by the way? Because when you thank God, you're acknowledging that He is real. You're acknowledging Him every time you do that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise your Lord. Oh, my. We need to be expressing gratitude to God and, and, and for people all the time because that is what is expected. By the way, gratitude is a mark of a growing Christian. One of the greatest gauges of our spiritual life, I believe, is gratitude. I believe in those verses in 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, he says, uh, Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning you. I believe those are three gauges in your life. How much you rejoice, how much you pray, and how much you thank the Lord. I hate to tell you, but going to church is not a gauge of your spirituality. I would even say how much you, read, you can read your Bible every day, but that's not. I, I know people that will tell me they read their Bible every day, and yet I know that they're not good Christians. No gauge, because rejoicing comes from within. Prayer comes from within. Something inside of you says, I need to pray. And thanksgiving is something that comes flows through your heart. And gratitude is a test of your maturity and of your spiritual character. It shows the kind of Christian you are. Um, a baby. Baby's ungrateful. My daughter, Bethany, FaceTimed a little while ago. Boy, she fed that little baby. She had a smile on her face and wasn't but 15 minutes later she started crying again. Babies are ungrateful. Man, you walk, walk them, you feed them, you take care of them, you put them down. They don't look up and you say, boy, I sure appreciate that. 
No, you put them down, they start crying again. Amen? Yeah, uh, children are ungrateful. You have to force them to say thank you. Huh? Right? You give them something and, and they want to take it, run with it, and do you stop them and say, now, uh, Valerie? <laughs> Valerie? What do you say, Valerie? Thank you. Right? Am I, am I wrong? Of course. you got to force kids. And by the way, you, you expect it. You, you don't expect kids to naturally be thankful and, oh, mommy, you're wonderful. Oh, mommy, this. And, and they have to be taught that. They have to be forced to do that. It has to be ingrained in their life. Oh, listen, we, uh, one, lady, one lady gave her little grandson a piece of cake. And the little boy said, thank you. And she said, boy, I love it when little boys say thankful, th thank you. And he then looked at her and said, boy, if you give me another scoop of ice cream, I'll say thank you again. <laughs> but isn't that a kid? Isn't that the way kids are? They, you know, they say thank you, but they do it because they expect something. And yet we ought to be thankful. Oh, they ought to be, con and, and it shows how spiritual life, it shows you're a growing Christian when you have a constant, continual, praising spirit and thankful spirit and grateful spirit. But not only that, gratitude is a mark of a giving Christian. Uh, James 1.17 says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of Turning. That means everything you and I have today is from God. Everything. Nothing. The air you breathe comes from God. The water you drink comes from God. The food you eat comes from God. All of it. That's one of the reasons why we should give to the work of God. We should give to what God is trying to do. Why? Because God gave it to you. You ought to give some back to God. That's what the Thanksgiving offering is all about. I don't believe I would be a good pastor if I didn't lead you to give a Thanksgiving offering. Old Testament, they did it. Local New Testament church ought to do it too. Grace is going beyond the tithe. Grace is going beyond what God says you have to give. Grace says I want to give more than I have to give. I want to give more. Grace abounds beyond the law. Oh, we ought to give. Someone has said Thanksgiving Thanksgiving, to be truly thanksgiving, is first thanks, then giving. And somebody as well said, you can give without being thankful, but you cannot be thankful without giving. So when you give to an offering like we had this morning, or any offering, you are acknowledging by, by putting that money into that offering plate. By the way, you're not giving it to the church, you're giving it to God. And when you put that money in that plate... Well, you send that money to church, or you go through our website, however you do that. You are, every time you give, you're acknowledging that God gave you everything. And it's your way to say, thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation, so rich and so free. You're saying, thank you, Lord. Somebody, somebody gave this analogy of a man talking to an angel. And he said, must I keep on giving again and again? Oh no, said the angel. And his glance pierced me through. Just give until the master stops giving to you. Amen. You know what? God hadn't stopped giving to me. And I, there's times I probably didn't give like I should give, but God has never stopped giving to me. And it's a convicting thing in my heart. It ought to be a convicting thing in your heart. By the way, I think of our dear brother, Brother Sam. By the way, that could have been any one of us here. Any one of us could be in a bed tonight. Not able to move half our body. Not able to talk. Us men, we, we uh, true men, thrive and strive to work hard and accomplish things and build something. That's what a man does. That's what a man should want to do. I don't understand men that don't have desires to build something, accomplish something, do something with their life. We have, oh, I don't want to get on that because I'm going to get all flustered. But that, I, I, when that happened, I thought that could be me. That could be me. And maybe someday, point is, boy, I want to take the life that I have 
and give it as much as I can give it. And thank God I can work today. My hands can move today. My feet can walk today. My arms still have strength in them today. My eyes can still see. My ears can still hear. I can still speak with this voice and preach the word of God. I ought to use it to the glory of God until the day comes and I cannot do it anymore. My good friend, my son's pastor, Johnny Esposito, after a missions conference, amazing church, eight, nine, a hundred, a thousand running. I mean, built an amazing church. Started with a bunch of Cambodian teenagers. Built, and, and that's all they had. It was a Cambodian teenager church. And God built that up, and parents began to come, and then other people began. Now it's a multicultural church. Amazing church. Well, after missions conference, my son was walking to him, with him to, his, to the house. He said, go back and get me something. Bring it to the house. He came to the house. And all of a sudden the car came out, and Brother Esposito went to the back. He had somewhat of a, called an aneurysm on the side of his head. It just literally, the, uh, the vessels in his head blew up on one side of his head. That was 12, 13 years ago. He's still, still not hardly able to talk and move his body. He's a prisoner. And I think about him every day. He's a prisoner in his body. And think, boy. I ought, to, I ought to be thanking God every day that I can talk and do what I'm doing. I think sometimes, Lord, you should have took me and not him. Better man, better church. Oh, shame on us that we, we shortchange God with our money and with our life and with our talents and with our time. Oh, we ought to be giving. Gratitude is a mark of giving Christians. Not just your money, but your time and your talents. You give it to the Lord. And then lastly, and I'm done, gratitude is the mark of a glowing Christian, a happy Christian, joyful Christian. Look at Psalms 100, if you would, please. Psalms 100. I'm just about done here. It's not even 7 o'clock. Wow. Somebody say amen. But it's not done yet. <laughs> I shouldn't even say anything. Psalms 100, verse number 1. <laughs> and I know you're, you, are, you thought that anyways. I know you did. Don't tell me you didn't. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Aren't you glad for that, Brother Bixby? Noise, not a harmonic tune. All ye lands. How can we be joyful? Look at verse 4. Enter into his gates with what? That means, man, oh man, when you enter into your time with God, your devotional time with God, your walk with God, before you do anything, you ought to go in there thanking God. I tell you, Lord, Lord, I'm coming into your gates with thanksgiving. Now I'm coming into your port, uh, courts with praise. Amen? You know what? That'll make you a joyful Christian. That'll make you a happy, Christian. Lord, Psalms 92, verse 1, It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. Boy, a, great, a Christian who is catch the gratitude attitude, I guarantee you, they're, they're happy, they're joyful, they're positive, they're encouraging. They don't let things get them down. They don't let people get them down. They're focusing on the blessings, not the burdens. Because once you, if you lost those blessings, you would really be down. I was reading Habakkuk this week, and it just struck me how Habakkuk, I, I want you to turn there real quick. So, it, it, use your table of context so we can get there tonight. Because <laughs> I know some of you, you have no idea where that is. Somewhere in their Bible, I know that. I was struck by this. Look at, look at the first chapter. And, and it even starts out with, look at, it's the what? It's the burden. This is a prayer. This is a conversation with God, Habakkuk. This is the only book in the Bible that it's a, it's a conversation between this man, Habakkuk, and with God. And he starts out very negative. Very critical, actually. Look, he says, The burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see. O Lord, how long shall I cry, and, and thou wilt not hear? Even, and, and I'm doing this because I think this is a good illustration for what we're living through right now. He says, Even cry out unto thee of violence, and thou wilt not save. 
What is he saying? God, I'm crying to you, I'm praying, you're not doing anything. Why dost thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me. By the way, isn't that what we see in our nation? And there are, there are that raise up strife and contention. That, are we not seeing that now? Therefore, the, look at this. Therefore, the law is what? Slacked. And judgment doth never go forth. You all feel like that? For the wicked does compass about the righteous. Therefore, wrong judgment proceedeth. That's what we're living in right now. Behold, ye among the heathen, a regard, wonder. Now, this is God. This is God replies. I love it. Behold, you, ye among the heathen, a regard, and wonder marvelously, God says. Look what he said. For I will work a work in your days which ye will not believe. But look, though it be, though it be told you. In other words, God's saying, you would not believe what I'm doing. Now, God said, I'm not going to tell you, but you have no idea. I'm doing something amazing right now. Amen. And that's, and brother, listen, you say it about revival. I think that's what's happening right now. I, I know it's happening right now. God is doing something amazing right now. And we don't know. And I don't expect God to let me know. I just need to trust him. I need, just, I need to rejoice. I need to praise God. I need to be thankful to God. So somewhere in this conversation, Habakkuk starts out negative, critical, wasn't thankful, wasn't happy. The burden, he calls it, this is my burden. And by the end of this conversation with God, I love it. Look at the end of the chapter. Look at, ver look at verse number, now let's go to uh, 16. Uh, when, I heard my, when I heard my belly trembled, my lips quivered at the voice. Rottenness entered into my bone, and I, and I trembled in myself, that I might rest in the day of trouble. Last chapter, chapter 3, verse number 16. When he cometh up into the people, he will invade them with his troops. Now look at, look at, look at what he said. I love this. He said, although the fig, fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vine. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the fields shall yield no, no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Look, he said, even though all these things happen, look at the next verse. He said, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. He said, I will joy in the God of my salvation. Amen. He said, I'm gonna, I am going to thank God. I'm going to praise God. And I'm just going to rejoice. I'm going to have joy. He said, the Lord is my strength. And he will make my feet like hinds feet and he will make me to walk upon my high places to the chief singer on my he said i'm even going to start singing with the with the instruments over there amen uh genie and the rarics are going to come out i'm just going to go over there and start singing with those folks amen what am i saying i am saying the gratitude attitude is more important in our life than any of us really truly understand you better catch gratitude catch it Every morning, get up. Lord, I want the gratitude attitude today. I want to have a good spirit today. Things aren't going great, but I'm thankful, Lord. I'm thankful for what I have. I'm even thankful for what's going on in my life right now. And I am not going to let the circumstances in my life determine my spirit in giving you thanks. We all know the story of Midas. Midas, it's, it's not a true story. It's a Greek mythology story. And Midas, of course, was a man, king. He had great riches, but he wanted more. Wanted more gold. And so the gods gave him the touch. Everything he touched turned to gold. He thought he touched a chair and it turned to gold. He touched a rock and it turned to gold. Only problem is he touched his daughter and she turned to gold. He went to have an apple and he touched the apple. And that turned to gold. And so he couldn't eat anything, couldn't touch anybody. Now, that, that story ended very sadly. And that's what we would consider. They say the, he's got the Midas touch. Everything he touches turns to gold. Can I tell you what I think the Midas touch is? You know what the real Midas touch is? To put gold in your life? Do you know how you can have a golden life every day? The Midas touch is being thankful, is having gratitude. 
That's the Midas touch. You, gotta, you have the gratitude attitude. You know what? Everything you touch, it's going to be like gold in your life. Yeah, but I thought they treat you bad in their job. It's a job. I get paid. I can support my family. Nah, that's gold. That's not that bad. Uh, you know how you can make the last years of your life what they call the golden years? And not the grumpy years? You know how you do that? You know, you know what's so sad? That a lot of people grow up and they just become grumpy people. Have you noticed that? They don't get gladder. They get grumpier. I, I, I've done rest, rest home ministries for years. And, and, and I hate to say it, but typically you go in, people are very grumpy. Very grumpy. And you know why? Because they never caught the gratitude attitude. And they've never gotten the Midas touch. You want the Midas touch? Then uh, you express your gratitude all the time. Uh, you want the, uh, the Midas touch? You, you express your gratitude in everything. Not just when things are going good, that's easy, but when things are going bad. And by the way, sometimes people know things are going bad, but then they see it and they think, man, he looks like he's happy. Why is he so thankful? I know what's going on in his life. That's the Midas touch. Amen? And then you do it because that's what's expected of you anyway. It's the will of God. You're not, I repeat, you're not in the will of God if you're not being thankful. You just step. Somebody said, how do I know the will of God? I know one way that you can right away know that you're in the will of God. As soon as something happens, just say, thank you, Lord, and mean it. Amen? Amen. And guess what? You are now stepped into the will of God. Now God can lead you to more of his will. So just, just right away, every, that's why every morning, enter into his gates with what? Thanksgiving. Just start out the day thanking him. Take, take as much time. So, listen, there are times I've gotten so into thanking God and praising God, I, I looked at my watch and said, oh my goodness, I'm done. i got to go. Amen? It's been so much fun. Boy, you get to thank and praising God, and man, you start to slobber and everything. You think, God, this, man, this is so good. I don't want to leave. Amen? It is good. God's good. Amen? You know what? we got to quit. I'm hungry. It smells good. Father, I pray you'll just bless now. Use this message, Lord. What a time to, in our country, Lord. And really, we're the light of the world. And one of the ways we shine our light, I think the greatest way we can shine our light is just go home and let's be thankful.